I'm like so scared. It's Hamlet. I'm so scared. Yeah. And I'm like, so much of it is like, can I even do this? Yeah, there are so yeah, yeah, many yeah. lines and like, there's so much expectation. And also you're putting that on my thing. <laughs> Well, listen. Welcome, mate. Oh man, I'm like, I'm so, I'm so split about how I feel about being on this because, like, because I, I, I saw you at that thing like yeah. a, a few months ago, and I was like, oh man, like, I love your, I love you, obviously, but I love your podcast so much. I listened to it, uh, Legends on it, blah blah blah. And then you were like, come on it, and I was like, fuck. <laughs> 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 I was like, I like listening to yeah, it, yeah, but yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know. So I oh, know, mate. I'm, I'm uh, buzzing at you that we got to do it. You know what I mean? Yeah. Because I know yeah, you're yeah. going away. You're going away soon, aren't you? you yeah, going? I'm going away in a couple in in next week actually. Oh yeah. 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 Like. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm actually taking a little bit of time off before <coughs> like a lot of things this year. Like yeah. we, we, we did a play last year at the National Theatre that's going to New York yeah. in, in, in the spring. The effect, yeah? Yeah, the effect, yeah. yeah. So we're taking that to New York in, in, in March and then I'm off doing this, that and, in, and the other. So Is it the same cast? Yeah. Yeah? Yeah, that was, a, that was kind of um, something that we didn't want to budge on because the, you know, the play that we made was... Incredibly, it, it was in the National Theatre, so it's in this massive, massive space, but yeah. incredibly intimate yeah. kind of production, and and yeah, it's just like it. it, it you feel. I, I wonder if you ever feel this, but when you like happen upon like an energy collectively that feels like it works easily, yeah, yeah, as yeah. well as dynamically, it doesn't happen all the time, and, yeah, when, yeah. and to kind of like mess with that, yeah it just changes it into something completely different. So we were, we were all very keen to keep keep the band together as it was. When is, when is, how long is it on for there then? It's only on for a month. All right. Which yeah. is kind of good. It's in and out, you yeah, know? Yeah, yeah. Um, and, you know, like when you've got a short run, people are like, oh, I can't get a ticket. It, 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 it kind of uh, increases the hype. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, like, yeah, as yeah. As opposed to like six months. And like <laughs> when, when, does it, when does it actually come start then over there? When, when does it? Um, it starts on the 3rd of... Third of March. Third of March. Third of March. Are you going to be out there? I, I, well, I, no, probably not because I'll be prepping on something, but I would love to. Tell all your people. I'm going to get out there on a weekend, maybe. Come the fuck out there. Man. Yeah, that would be, be a laugh. Uh, how, when, when, how long are you in prep for? We start, we start next week and then I'll be in prep till May. Oh, yeah, I remember you told me it was a, it was yeah, a long one. Yeah, it's a long one. Yeah. But weekends, you know, weekends. Fly to, you can fly to New York now on a weekend, can't you? You can. That's and so it's bougie like though, isn't it? Like, let's be honest. <laughs> You've made it, bro. <laughs> <laughs> You've made it. Where are you going? <laughs> just going to New York for the weekend. It See probably takes play. longer to, 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 to get to South London. Sometimes it gets yeah. longer to, to, to get to London for me on from Manchester. Yeah. I won't go into the the train. What a podcast about train delays. About, about, about train delays, <laughs> specific well train company. <laughs> so let's. I just want to like so let's just start from the from the beginning for you. When when I'm always really keen to know how people, you know, people's journeys and, and how they got into the industry and you know what sort of sparked it for you and what was your first sort of first, um, you know, that first sort of thought of like I want to do that. I want to be. I want to be in that industry. You know. Uh, yeah, it's kind of like an ongoing thought, to be honest. Yeah. But um, you're never really certain it's the right decision to make, you know, or or if it's um, something that will last forever. But mm. yeah, I don't know. For me, it feels like it came relatively late. I I I, I kind of I just told you I grew up in East. I I, I live in East London. I actually yeah. grew up in East London. Yeah. And kind of grew up single parent, kind of first generation immigrant. So. You know, going going to the theatre wasn't like top of the list of things to do mm. with your time. Mm. You know, so I didn't go to the theatre even for the first time till I was probably like eighteen years old. All oh, right, yeah. Um, and being honest, didn't really even I didn't really clock that actors were people. Do you know what I mean? I yeah. quite, like for the longest time, I thought like Will Smith was just the guy inside the TV or the guy on in, inside <laughs> yeah, the yeah, cinema yeah, screen. Yeah. You know, like it, yeah. it it would never occur to me that that's actually a man who's got that family at home and like yeah, yeah. has hobbies and y you know a uh, uh, a life outside of like Iron uh, what was it um, Hancock or yeah, yeah, like yeah, iRobot yeah, yeah. or whatever. Yeah. Um, so it wasn't really it wasn't really something that I thought about like that. Um, and also I didn't know, no one in my family did it or no one, none of my friends or the people that I lived with were mm. really moving like that. Mm. 
Um, and yeah, so if I kind of try and like work backwards, I, me- I remember I was quite lucky. Like I, I, I went to a school, um, the, a, a local school that happened to have a kind of like little theater thing in it. So they had drama classes. Mm. And I remember um, like, cause at the time I was like more into like playing, playing football yeah, yeah, yeah. and like, just like other like just doing a madness really mm. like outside um but like whenever they were, they were doing like school plays or whatever i would kind of like just like audition just like for fun or like because it was weird my, my school's quite weird like the the boys all had like, lessons together and the girls all had lessons together you know so you'd oh, only right. actually see the girls like at break time or in the same school in like? the same school oh, right, but that's... like they were trying to do a thing where they were like the boys are just like mad distracting to the girls. You know? <laughs> like the boys are just like holding the girls back. Yeah. So like, let's like try and like keep them like separate. Anyway, um, so I kind of like auditioned for these these school plays because the girls were in them as well, and you get you got to um, you got to spend time with them. Yeah. And um, they would always give me these like dickhead parts. Like I remember <laughs> like um, they did um, Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. Yeah, and I was like, oh, like, just give me Charlie, innit? Yeah, like, yeah, I'll yeah. body that part for real. Yeah. Um, but because I wasn't like doing the drama classes or doing the drama um, uh, lessons or whatever, they gave like that part to the guy who was doing that, and they gave me like Mike TV's dad. Oh god. And I'm like Mike TV. Obviously, I brought an inner life to that guy, yeah, you know. Course, but yeah. like, there's 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 only a certain. So I was just like, you know, fuck these guys. I was like, you know, like you can't you th- you can't do me like that. But like and I, and so I was doing football, 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 like and then also like look my my mum, like I, I grew up in a yeah my mum's from Ghana, West mm. Africa, yeah, yeah, and like when when you're from them ways like really the options that are put in front of you are like to try and be a doctor, to try and be a lawyer, right, try and right. be an accountant, like no one wants to hear anything about you know like dreaming Performing arts. or like yeah. arts, like yeah 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 what's yeah. art gonna do for you? Do yeah. you know what I mean? Um, so I was doing that as well, but so I was good. Uh, I, I was actually like on, on route to become a doctor and I was doing like science stuff. Oh, and really? blah, blah, blah. Yeah. 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 Just cause really. Mm. Um, but yeah, I just, I just happened to have this one teacher who had seen me do like some little like monologue piece kind of thing. And I had this one friend who had gone to this thing called National Youth Theatre. Mm-hmm. Um, and from school. From school, one yeah, guy yeah. who was who, who was going to National Youth Theatre, and he was like, "Yeah, yeah, it means that you get to be away from home for like two weeks. You can do whatever you want. You can stay in this that." Blah, blah. I was like, "Yeah, so six. So, <laughs> yeah. yeah, so I kind of auditioned to, for that, and then like got into it, but it was peak because like to do it, you had to pay like five hundred pound or whatever, and then yeah. you had to pay like I don't know, like seven hundred quid to like stay in the in the halls of residence yeah, that yeah. it came with. And I was like, I'm not gonna do it and then just like live at home. I wanna be in the middle, I wanna be in it, you yeah, know? Yeah, so yeah. like I had to do this thing to like kind of raise money to go where like I basically just like did like a kind of like, it's so embarrassing to think about now, but it was a kind of like audience with type thing. I did like a, like a, got everyone in the assembly and I was like, doing like I, I did some like some speeches from like some plays that I hadn't read but like <laughs> you know you got those like monologue books yeah yeah, they, yeah 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 so I just did some speeches from that and I like sang some songs <laughs> I had my friend I did like uh, an Usher song I had my friend like doing like the synth bit I, I, I did like a song by this band called the Plain White Tees oh yeah 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 song I they, they, Delilah one hit wonder yeah yeah travesty yeah. But um, I had like my friend like playing the guitar along to that, you know, like I really sold my soul to be honest. But to raise money, to raise money, yeah, I charge everyone like three pound to come. What? Yeah, which um, which is like really like tra- it's like converting social capital <laughs> into like actual <laughs> capital, you know. Yeah. But yeah, anyway, I went to National Youth Theatre and that was the first time I was around people who were kind of like like minded mm-hmm. and then talking about these things like plays and going to the theatre and then started talking about drama school and yeah. like that's when I started hearing about like acting being like a profession, yeah. a profession that you could do, um, and yeah, from there I kind of, kind of went, went into it, you know, mm-hmm. like I joined like 
this the the Arcola Theatre in Hackney had yeah, this yeah, like yeah. youth youth academy that I did start doing plays with them and then Frantic Assembly. Yeah. Uh this like physical theatre um troupe that kinda like did this like thing that was specifically aimed at like young young men from inner city backgrounds and we started mm. like devising um and then yeah like kind of started auditioning from dra- for drama school and yeah blah, blah, blah. <coughs> so what age what age did you do did you go to the national youth theater then 18 oh 18, 18. so yeah. you so you were in you would have been in like college yeah st- yeah go- i was just like I, I was just um i was just like leaving college yeah is that when you did this the showcase thing yeah or? yeah oh, okay yeah yeah yeah, yeah. it was kind of like it was lucky that it was in the final year because like <laughs> if you do that then you gotta come back after summer like it's not gonna be it's not gonna be it's not gonna be cool but yeah and so then you got into the um so you were in the national youth how long was that for National Youth Theatre is a kind of thing where you do like a two week course. Oh, OK, OK. And then after that, they've got kind of things that you can do. They, they It used to be amazing. They used to do like a kind of summer season where they'd get yeah. everybody to come down to London and they'd do plays at the Soho Theatre. Oh, yeah. And like <clears throat> loads of people who 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 have gone on to do amazing things now, like kind of like started, started, started there. Um, but like. Yeah, still, like, at at these times, I really, really still felt, like, way behind all the other people. Yeah. Because, like, all these other people had kind of, like, either been acting since they were young Mm. or been doing, like, uh, uh, youth theatres or been, like, brought up in the theatre, like, knowing about Shakespeare and Mm. all of that. And I didn't have any of that kind of contextual knowledge. Yeah, yeah. Both, like, in terms of, like... well where, where I was brought up or the way I was brought up and yeah. all like the kind of things that I was doing as a young person. So like from early like I had that kind of imposter syndrome yeah, yeah. thing. And I think like so much of our journeys as artists is about like how we kind of either make a friend of that imposter or, you know, like reject it in some way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Totally, totally. What was your mum like <laughs> how was she what, d- during the whole time of like the National Youth Age and all that, was she did she come around to being supportive or was it always like still what are you doing you need yeah, a proper mom, job my mum was amazing um but like sly with it basically <laughs> so um i w- i was like <laughs> i was so i actually auditioned two years in a row for drama schools right mm. and look this is it, like I, I can't help but rate her because like i i was really like on the verge of going to medical school i had like offers from like proper universities really? so i was going to go to ucl and study yeah, medicine yeah, right? yeah, yeah, yeah. so yeah. like when you're like when you've like come to england this co- come from ghana to england this cold country in, yeah, like, yeah, in yeah. the 80s and then you've gone through the 90s in england and yeah. then like y- your kid has kind of got to 18 years old and like it's still there and like wow they got the offer from it she's like i'm nearly at the finish line and then <laughs> kind of get the rug gets pulled from under her. but like yeah i was i was auditioning to drama schools and like the thing about my mom was like she was like look whatever you do you have to just make sure you do it fully right yeah, yeah, so yeah, like yeah, if you're yeah, going yeah. to do medical school you have to do it like with everything if you're like auditioning for drama, you have to make sure you like practice loads and like you make sure you give yourself the best opportunity and mm. like work ethic is was was her thing. Um, but like yeah, so I auditioned like maybe at like eight drama schools. I say like, I, really? I did like Rada, Lambda, um, Central, Central, all of the big ones. Mm. And I kept on doing them and getting recalls. And my mom was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And then I'd get to the final round and then wouldn't get in. Right. And she'd come to me and she'd be like, I'm so sorry. Like, that's so hard. Like, so, so like, I, I can imagine how disappointing. And then my sister rang, my sister only told me this year that, like, she would just then ring my sister and be like, yes, he didn't get in. <laughs> yes. Right. <laughs> that's one, one more down, one more you know, down. you know. One more closer yeah, to exactly, medical school. Exactly. <laughs> You're going to have to go back. Yeah, yeah. Um, and yeah, so I actually ended up like going to Guildhall and Guildhall was the last place that I auditioned right. for. So like the way it works, like you can start auditioning from like September and like some people are doing recalls in like January, February, whatever. And mm. Guildhall do their recalls in, in um, I think May, end of May yeah. or even beginning of June. So that was the last, last, last one. So yeah. my mom's still keeping up the pretense of like, oh, you know, you've still got one more chance. I really hope you make it. Yeah. Like, just like keep keep going, keep going. Yeah. Where on the slide, she's like, we're nearly there. <laughs> <laughs> um but yeah i got into that one <laughs> what's the what's the process because i never went to drama school myself right. and i suppose like for people who 
who were, who were thinking about going to drama school, what is the process like? What what are the auditions? Because I'm presuming is it just like auditioning for a for a show or a theatre? Um, yeah, I mean, kind of. It's kind of different everywhere, to be honest. But um, and also, I don't know if it's the same now because like it was pretty. I would say pretty restricted or restrictive. Mm. So that at most drama schools, you have to do a classical speech and a, and a contemporary speech. Right. Right. And you do it once for like one panel of people and then you do it for a, for a more senior panel. And then yeah. you go to a round where you have to do like improvisation and movement. And yeah. 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 Maybe singing. I'm a terrible singer. So I think that's, that was, that was a real, uh, bre- <laughs> uh, sticking point for yeah. various I- institutions. But like, yeah, you kind of, do it at different schools and every school kind of claims to have this like very specific um unique kind of energy about it but mm. like they're pretty much all the same yeah, yeah i yeah. think you know um and the, and you keep seeing the same people like all this so like and there's nothing like gossip in the in the waiting room for right. a drama school audition to terrify it's worse than it's do you remember being like in spotlight yeah when you'd be like auditioning in spotlight and people would be like oh have you been have you gone in for have you seen yeah me? oh Nina my Fifth god and well is this your re- are you on a recall oh, 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 no, oh, oh, okay, they're okay. lovely they are lovely yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, fucking shut up yeah man. shut up you know like, or, 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 <laughs> or doing the lines out loud in front of you like yeah yeah, like, yeah, oh, yeah. They've, they've got it I remember, I remember at a drama school audition, there was this guy who was in a full on, like, full body leotard. Right? Oh my God. And, like, he's doing, like, Pilates yoga, like, in the mid, and, like, it's in this room where there's, like, 40 kids kind of, like, yeah, just, like, yeah. trying to keep it together. He's doing, ma, 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 ma. Oh, whoa, God. Whoa, you know? Yeah, yeah. And again, like I said, I'm like, I don't know what acting is. <laughs> so, like, I, should I be doing that? <laughs> you know, I'm yeah, wearing, yeah. like, a tracksuit and, <laughs> you know? Yeah. So, like, yeah, drum school kind of like the the circuit is is very much like yeah like an extension of the spotlight waiting room. But I remember I remember auditioning for Band of Brothers, like one of the first auditions, and there was a guy there in full military. Oh my god! Full military really? uniform. Yeah. What do you think about that as a director when you see people? I mean, to be honest with you, like, I I I I, I understand some people's process, but but it, it, there's a point. It's a it, there's a bit of a it's a bit weird. Yeah. I've seen people full full with like roughs, like <laughs> like that. I mean, the the military thing, I can kind of you know like yeah, yeah. you can kind of like say, hey, like I got an All Saints in yeah. the village, whatever, you know, like, it's, a, it's a look. But I've seen people come in with full like Georgian like yeah, no. roughs, like heels, like oh, uh, shoes no. with the buckle and all that. But it's, like it's, I, it's it's a bit like it feels a bit desperate. You know what I mean? A bit like uh, yeah, for me, it's, it's I, I don't. But but like, I would never you know, you know. But I would I, never I say think, don't think, do it. But I, I think as actors we're kind of we're kind of it's it's hard because like it's that kind of mindset of marginal gains, right? And yeah. and we're kind of encouraged to think that we are not enough. Therefore, we need to do whatever we whatever we can to yeah, kind of yeah, like yeah. try and grab that attention of whatever you know. And yeah. like, there's various ways of doing it, but like um, there's something I I find there's something about. Like, and it, it's different strokes for different folks because, like, have you ever done the thing of like going in in, in accent? Oh, mate, I've got a story. Go. On. <laughs> I was, I was, um, what was it now? I was going to, I think I was going to LA and I was doing American. I was auditioning for something American. Yeah. And I'm at the airport um, and I got, I'd been in a show called dream team on sky one which which was oh, I know it was po- it was popular but it was like i'd get recognized every so often and i went into this shop it, it, like in the, in like in w.a smith or whatever and thought oh, i'm just gonna speak in an american accent and just be in it the whole time on the way over there you know and the guy was like <laughs> billy o'neill from dream team i was like yeah yeah it is me. Yeah, sorry, <laughs> he said what are you doing that accent for i was like oh i i, 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 I just i got a I couldn't expect. I was like, "Can I just get my chewing gum?" And yeah, go? yeah, the worst. But yeah, but I, I, I do get it. I, but to be fair though, people have come in to me in accents. I think if you're going to go in in an accent, you've got to be spot confident on. with it and spot on because people auditioned for me for Boiling Point, the fi- the feature, um, and they came in and we had these the American girls up in in the in the movie and they a few of them came in, in in the accent and they were just in the accent the whole time and I was convinced. And then it's only when we when they got the job and we turned up on set on the first day and they were like 
from London. Mm. And I was like, fucking hell. Yeah. It's, you know I, mean? I mean, it's it's commitment though, isn't it? Because yeah. like I've I've got I, I've got friends who who've done that, got the job, yeah, and then got on set and been like, shit, like do I have to like keep it up now? <laughs> yeah, because I, mean? I don't want to feel like well, people you, think I'm trying to like to deceive that. them or whatever. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> so like you're yeah. in the toilets, like asking, like, <laughs> asking what time tea break is, and you're just like, oh, just like let me live, man. Yeah, 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 yeah. And when <laughs> if you sleep, you're scared in case you're gonna slip up now. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And you're gonna get fired. Yeah. No, but um, I rate it. Are you honest. good with accents? I can do the accents that I can do, but yeah. like I, I like it's something that I have to work really, really hard on. Yeah. So like, there's there's something that I want to do, a project that I want to do like later on mm-hmm. next year. That's kind of like the Sheffield and oh yeah, and like there's something really specific. Like I, I, f- I feel like sometimes you kind of hear like general, general northern yeah. type thing on. On, on television and I hate it. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Um so like I'll start like working on that now. Yeah. To be yeah, honest, yeah, yeah. Because like I, I I'm really interested in like, you know, the difference in that sound to the difference with, with to a Manchester sound or yeah. a Yorkshire sound. And it's not just the, well. the it's all about the t- the tone and the intonations and mm. all that kind of stuff. It's like s- certain mm. accent they it's like a, like music, isn't it? You know mm. what I mean? Mm. Liverpool accent's the, the one of the hardest to do. Yeah, I can't do that. Yeah. And I'm not gonna do that. <laughs> <laughs> you know. But it but it is and and you know, I think as scousers like we can I can spot it a mile off, but but I, th- I think you know, a lot of people can spot the Liverpool accent when it's a, when it's done badly. Do you yeah. Know what I mean? um, but in so in Responda, I thought the accents were amazing, and yeah. I thought like Martin's accent was yeah yeah he worked he worked he worked on it for for a while. And it, 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 Did he? It was a weird one because because when I was like directing him, he's in, he's in the accent all day. Like he stays in it from the minute he gets in the car in the morning to the minute he, he, he we wrap. And and you sort of you get used to it. You know what I mean? It's just it's it's him as the character mm. and you don't even bat an eyelid and then it was just weird that like when we'd, I'd, we'd rap and then he'd be like he'd say bye to me and then he'd be Martin Freeman and you're like oh yeah that's Martin yeah, Freeman isn't it because it's his act because he's got a specific voice yeah do you know what I mean so it, it was it was the flip side of that it was a bit it was a bit a bit strange but um, I always wonder what how that works when you have to do ADR like yeah. Eight months later. Yeah, 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 yeah. You've yeah. kind of like been some. You've been in a completely different kind of state. Like, do you ever find like people turn up to ADR and the accent is just wonky? Yeah, as yeah, hell? Like, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they're out of practice. Yeah. Well, we had we had. Um, she won't mind me saying this, but Azuka, um, yeah. oil. She she's a good mate of mine. Yeah, yeah, I know. Yeah. yeah, I was just chatting to her then. Yeah, she's um, she did the French accent, and so yeah. in the ADR we had like the French dialect coach and also a French friend of hers who, who right, was just right, on right. Zoom the whole time because we wanted to get it right you know what yeah. I mean yeah it is brilliant though yeah, especially yeah, yeah, when yeah, yeah. because like she's got such a particular yeah normal accent yeah. or her her, her uh, natural accent yeah it's really it, I thought it was thrilling watching watching her in that I always get her to do accents and everything I do. yeah it's a joke now with us have you ever heard her sing yeah yeah I kind of think it, you, I think that's like having a cheat code. If you can like sing, you can kind of like get your ear into something. So yeah. she's such an amazing singer. Yeah, she is. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So now you get into drama school. Mm. How long was that? Three years? Is it four years? Three years. Three years. <coughs> yeah. So I went to uh, Guildhall. Guildhall. Where's that? That's in Central. It's in quite a weird. It's in. It's next to the Barbican Centre. So oh yeah, yeah. It's in Central Central London, and. I'd, n- I'd literally never been there before in my life. That's not, you just don't stay there, you just... Well, I you can. Oh, really? There's a kind of, and I did actually, there's a, yeah. there's a, there's like a little halls thing like around the corner from it. Oh, okay. Um, and I was kind of like desperate to get out of, well, I had a whole kind of like a family situation going at the time, so mm. I had to like get out. But, um, yeah, like, so yeah, Guildhall 2009 is when I, when I started. Mm-hmm. You and Guildhall's kind of like majority um, a music school. Right. It's like lots of like the best kind of classical musicians yeah. in the country go there to train. And you stay in this hall of, halls of residence around mm. the corner. So there's like 24 actors right. on the course and like maybe like 500 musicians. Oh, right. So you're staying in this, you're staying in this halls of residence and like every single morning like and musicians that like practice like they they're the real grafters, you know. Yeah, so they're yeah, doing yeah. like eight hours minimum practice each day. So you wake up, you wake up every single day, like to like Tchaikovsky and yeah. Beethoven, like on beautiful like violins and piccolos and whatever. 
it just so happened, and like I hope, like Liz, please don't put me on blast for this, but I happened to share a flat with a bassoonist. Right. And the bassoonist is not the sexiest sound in the world, <laughs> you know. It's not the most, kind, it's not the easiest sound on the ear, you know. So yeah, everyone yeah, else yeah. is like wait, waking up to these really kind of dulcet tones and I've got a kind of <laughs> <laughs> kind of every single morning. And I'm Alarm like, clock. do you know what I mean? And yeah, I'm yeah, like, yeah, yeah, you're the best bassoonist probably in the country, but <laughs> it's, it's still a bassoon. Anyway, so I start, so yeah, I'm at, I'm at Guildhall and it's like a completely wild experience i suppose mm. like um the way they do it the way they 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 announce who gets into it. usually like people like call you up on a phone mm. and uh, at the other drama schools and whatever you're doing they say hey we'd like to offer you a place the way they do it in at guild is a bit more like choosing the pope it's like oh, really it's like all the people who get recalled are yeah. all in this one room together what? yeah there's they're in this like gymnasium so it's like me it's like the guy in the leotard it's like <laughs> you know it's like genuinely like uh, like 150 people or something and you've got to like wait for like six hours or something whilst the people are in the back room kind of picking who's going to be in there yeah. after seeing all the auditions and then someone comes in and they kind of like read um, did they just read like names off a list and, and then the others have to just leave just just like it's so brutal oh my god man! it's so brutal obviously I don't know what that's like because man's name was on the list yeah, yeah, so, yeah, like, yeah. so so we kind of went into this other room but it was like so from the beginning it was kind of like had this like high tension about it mm. um, and yeah that's that that those, those are the 25 people that you kind of um, spend the next three years with and yeah. Yeah, I think my main kind of takeaway from that time was, yeah, this feeling of like playing catch up mm. constantly and like trying, like I was like so desperate to like figure out what acting was. Yeah, 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 yeah. And like the more you do this thing or the more you're, like, definitely like the more you're at drama school, but I think even like the more you're kind of like working as an actor, like you realise that there is no lesson that is where they teach you where the acting is done. You yeah, know, like yeah, they'll yeah. do the thing where like they'll <coughs> teach you about practitioners or teach yeah, you about yeah, yeah. techniques or yeah. you know, voice or movement or whatever. But I was always like, <laughs> yeah, this is cool, but when we're going to do the acting, you yeah, know? Yeah, 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 yeah. Or when we're going to teach you? Because I, I honestly thought that acting, and I don't know if I'd just been like reading like about, about like Brando or whatever, but like I thought that acting was like, you'd like, when you're doing a character, you kind of like, it's kind of like the Matrix, like, when you're in character, you are kind of unconscious and the character is just like <laughs> doing the thing and then yeah. you come back and you're like, oh, wow. Yeah. <laughs> so I was like, that sounds sick. When do I do that? Yeah. And so like, I was profoundly disappointed for three years <laughs> that, 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 that I never actually had that experience. But yeah, it was, but it, it was, it was definitely like one of the most challenging three years of my life, but also pretty rewarding in, yeah. in, in many, many ways. And is it like, <clears throat> do they teach you like, is it mainly stage stuff like theater acting or because it is there's there is it is different isn't it like th stage and tv and film it's not massively different but there's this you know do they teach do they teach you about you know what it's like to be on set and all that kind of stuff or not is it at all or really? at least we didn't get taught i know right. like it's like it, it feels like it was only it was only like 10 years ago or whatever but like it's a lifetime ago like yeah yeah i still like me i still mentor people who are at drama school now young yeah. people and like I was chatting to one of them yesterday and they were telling me that like as part of their final whatever they're like making a film they're making oh, a short cool. film oh that's cool yeah yeah yeah, yeah 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 like yeah. that's properly been written by like a film a screenwriter yeah. it's going to be properly directed edited cut or graded everything and then that'll be sent out to agents and yeah yeah, custom yeah, yeah. And I was like what like, yeah we had like one guy who like came in and was and the only thing he was just like obsessed with marks Right. He was just like the the only thing he told you was like where to stand, mm, really. Mm. Um, and and like yeah, it, it, the guilt at the time was definitely like a more kind of like classical training. Yeah. And you know it's great and whatever, but like it just meant that when I first got my first TV job, it was like, it was actually like disastrous. It oh, was really? disastrous how like little I knew about what was going on. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I just remember like. Um, I didn't know who the director was. 
because like the, you walk on and they're like, this is the third assistant director. Oh, and then they yeah. say, this is the second assistant director. <laughs> and they're like, but you make sure you listen to the first assistant director. Yeah. And I was like, which one's the actual director, <laughs> right? So, and, and I also thought that every take would start with lights, actions, l lights, cameras, action. Action, yeah, you know? yeah. So when people started talking about turning over, I was like, t like turning Who's what turning over, over, you know? Yeah. Like, like, and, and, and you realize like, there is a huge amount of language around a set and yeah, around yeah, yeah. And, and and because there's such a kind of pressure around time and around money mm -hmm. and about around like, you know, you've got to make sure, you know, there's not a huge amount of, or on certain sets, there's not a huge amount of um, care taken yeah. over like educating people. Yeah. It's just like learn and learn quickly. Yeah. So I remember my first, my first gig was kind of disastrous. I was like, speaking way too loud and then way too quietly and then looking at looking down the lens the barrel of the lens and <laughs> and like asking like the wrong people about like what time lunch was and yeah yeah, you know, yeah. Like, the producer exactly <laughs> well the producer should be telling me about well that, yeah they should yeah, yeah 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 um so yeah that drama school experience was and like the reason i kind of hesitated when you said it's different it's like it is different stage and screen, but like fun the fundamentals, I think, yeah. are the same. And you should be able to get a training for both. Yeah, 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 I mean? yeah, yeah. Whether that's through a drama school, whether that's through like a different type of mm. training method, if 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 it's if it's really kind of directed towards like a harnessing of truth and mm. spontaneity and imagination yeah. of the individual, which I think is really all we're ever looking for, yeah, yeah, both yeah. as like collaborators or as viewers or audience members, mm. then you can do that on both. But like, yeah, like our, 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 our training was very kind of, and I had to kind of shed this a little bit. I really think that drama school should be like a kind of they present they should present you with a tool box and with mm. a tool box and you should be able to decide which ones right, are yeah, right yeah, for yeah, you. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, which yeah. ones to take and which ones <clears throat> not to take and there's no right or wrong. But in terms of techniques you mean? I think so. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. No, I, I think you're right, yeah. Do you know what I mean? Because like some people like some people love like Stanislavski or mm. some people love Meisner or mm. some people love like a Strasbourg method mm. or you know, or some people love just like, n some people don't even want to look at the script. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. They want to like kind of hear what the scene's about and then just go from go there. Go for it, yeah, yeah, yeah. And that can provide some of the most like alive kind of real performances. Mm. Um, and all of them are right if they're yeah. the right thing for the person, you know? So I think I think it's quite important. Like I think as especially as young actors, you're so desperate to get the idea of like what the right thing is to do yeah. that you'll take like a methodology and just like hold on so tightly to it yeah and then become so frustrated when it doesn't quite work for you or yeah yeah you know, it kind of actually starts blocking your yeah you nurse your essence mm. you know um i think it's about being confident as well in terms of like like what you said there i mean i, know, I didn't go to drama school but i, I know people, a lot of people who did and they say they 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 go into drama school with all these expectations and hopes and you know, I'm going to be an actor and this is how I'm going to do it. And then they get bombarded with all of these different techniques that you should learn. And then they come out just like rabbit in headlights and mm. like, I don't know what I'm doing. You know, it's all so confusing. Mm. So I think, <clears throat> you know, being confident and just going, that's the one I want to mm. focus I, on. I, yeah. And I think like at the end of the day, like whatever your medium is within the, the artistic spectrum, like no one's going to be able to do the, do you better than you? Yeah, be yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you yeah. know what I mean? So like all of these like techniques, practitioners, whatever, should just be like m methods of releasing you, yeah. releasing the thing that you can do, mm. and expanding that as yeah, well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, like making that richer and deeper and yeah, and and wider. And yeah, sometimes like, I remember at drama school, like I think about it now, and it feels like we went to the drama school in like the thirties or something. Because <laughs> like there was this one teacher who was like if you don't if you can't speak in rp you're not going to work oh wow so for all of us we had to speak like in rp which is yeah received pronunciation yeah essentially posh yeah yeah yeah, um, yeah, yeah. for for a whole term what the, you, like like all, all day. day all day oh my god and i'm from east london yeah you know, yeah, so yeah, I had to, yeah, like, yeah go back to 
Um, I had to go back home and I was chatting to my mates and they're like, why are you talking like that? And I'm like, it's acting, it's yeah, acting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I need to work on that yeah, acting, yeah. you know? So <clears throat> it's, 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 it's quite, it, yeah, I'm. I feel conflicted about my time at drama school, and like, mm. I the, the the reason I feel conflicted is because I, I just know for a fact I would not be an actor, or I would not still be working as an actor if I hadn't, if me personally hadn't been to drama school, because yeah. there was so much that I didn't know. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. There was, you know, like there were so many people that I learned from, and you know, it was the it was the launch pad that I personally needed, needed. to to get into this industry yeah but like it's definitely not the be all and end all and it's not the um it's not it, it won't be for many 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 people yeah yeah, you know? yeah. so there are definitely huge pros and cons I think, yeah to I, I, I speak to a lot of actors who are like think they need to go to drama school to be able to sort of make it a living but you know there's other ways there are other ways mm. i mean so how did you get into it i i fell into it like Basically, I was, I'd, I was going around this um, with this. They were like a cabaret show, basically, <coughs> in Liverpool, and they go around all the pubs. And like one of my best mates was was the main like girl in it, and she was. And so, I just used to go and follow them at weekends because it was fun. You know what I mean? And yeah. watching them do these shows and stuff. <coughs> and then they were putting on a show in Liverpool in uh, St George's Hall, which is big old hall there and they've got like a courtroom in there so they were putting on um, trial by jury um, and they were like do you want to be in it I was like yeah, yeah. sure and I'd, I'd sort of like how old are you at this point I was um, 14 14 and, and but I'd, I'd sort of been because of because of that I think I'd been interested in and I'd al I was always interested in film and, and how it was made and I went to Universal Studios when I was like uh, you know, seven right, 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 right. saw like the magic of how ET was made and all that kind of stuff. You know what I mean? It was just, it was just magical for me. And then, <clears throat> and then an agent came to watch the show that we put on, a local Liverpool agent, and she was just like, "Do you want to come and, you know, have a chat with us? Sign up." I was like, "Yeah, wow, great." And then, I, I had a couple of auditions for Brookside, Course. didn't get the parts. Of course. And then, <coughs> I got an audition for Dream Team. And Oh no, I did. I did. A, I did a film first for BBC with um, David Morrissey. I played David Morrissey as a young fifteen-year-old wow. um, in some flashbacks, and it was like that was my first time on set. Yeah. So I was like, "You, do you know what I mean?" Yeah. I hadn't been to drama school. I was properly blagging it. Yeah. And it was just like, uh, you know, I just had no idea what was what was going on but i think it's interesting because like or, or look especially something like dream team because mm. you're being you're being very modest about it but like dream team was the show when <laughs> when i was at school you mm. know and like i was always like got it because it was on sky yeah yeah, right? yeah, yeah, yeah. And i didn't have sky so i was gutted because like everyone would be chatting about oh, it really? and i'd be like Cause yeah, the football. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know, so like, w I mean, when footballers' wives came into the picture, I was like, yeah, now we could talk. But yeah, <laughs> but but um, yeah, dream team was the thing. But like, I I kind of wonder if there is like, just to go back to what your you said that your friends were saying about like going to drama school and having all of these things thrown at you and it actually like knocking mm. your confidence and making you feel like you you can't you you're not doing it right. Yeah. Did you have the thing of like? Because like you had just gone straight into the industry and people had just been like, yeah, you can do the thing that you can do. Mm. And you go into a, a show like Dream Team, which is one of the biggest shows on television at yeah. the time, everyone's talking about it, et cetera. Did you, did you actually have like, did you feel that you had kind of the confidence to, to do your thing because you knew what you wanted to do and you knew they wanted you to do the thing that you wanted to do? I was just, I was just doing, doing, the, the, doing the thing, like what, I, what I'd done. Which I, and it was seemed to be working. Do you know what I mean? Mm. So I didn't know what that was. Mm. I, I, gu I guess <clears throat> looking back now, it was just just reacting mm. and being in the moment. You know, well, what that's I mean? it, isn't it? It's just being, isn't it? Like I, I, I suppose I didn't have any like preconceptions of like, you know, the cameras and all. Like, it was nerve wracking. Don't get me wrong, but it was like I was just listening to that person, and yeah. I was just, you know, I'd I'd learn the lines and then. But but I had <coughs> I had like what you were saying before about having to be RP, being told you'd never work if you if you weren't RP. Like there was one particular director on Dream Team who would he was he was a bully, 
and he and he and he and he actually knocked my confidence massively. Whenever he was on, whenever I knew he was going to be directing the episode, I'd, al- I'd always be like a proper like anxious, nervous, nervous. Yeah. Because he would be like, "What are you? I, I don't understand your fucking accent. What are you saying? Speak no, speak normally, speak properly." Mm. And I'd be like, oh, "I didn't know what else to, to mm. say or to do." Do you know what I mean? Now I'd be like, hey, "Shut your fucking mouth." You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. But <clears throat> back then I was like, "I need to respect him because he's the director and he's right." And you know, but it was just like, again, not no, not understanding really the industry or. Do you think? Do you think that that kind of culture? There's been a cultural shift away from that kind of director and that kind of expectation of actors. It, feel, it feels like, yeah, I, 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 I think so. I think so. Um, you know, but for, I mean, only speaking from my own personal, you know, the way I work is like, there's no hierarchy. Mm. I don't, I don't like anyone to be sort of, you know, think that they're better than anyone else on mm. set and. Like what you said, you know, if, if you're brand new and I know that you're brand new and you've never been in the industry before, I'll mm. make sure that, that we explain everything that's going on all the time mm. to you so that you don't feel like, you know, a deer in the headlights. And mm. you, you, so I think that it is changing um, and it need it did need to change because, you know, the whole bullying thing and all that, it's like, and, and, and the way actors were treated, like, I mean, I, you know, even like just small things like the audition and process and you know you go through rounds of auditions and then you just don't hear anything mm. that's horrible that you know what i can do to like actors are human beings and at the end of the day <coughs> you've got to have a thicker skin to be an actor because you're constantly getting rejected but at the same time if you know like i try my best as much as i can and it is hard because you see so many people but i try my best to like you know people who get quite far down the line if they don't get the job, I like to write them a letter to say, look, this is why we've gone with this other person. Nothing to do with anything you've done. You were amazing. It's just, you know, the relationship or the, you know, the look or whatever it is. It's not you. It's, mm. it's you, you, you're amazing. Mm. And, you know, the amount of comments I've had back from actors just to say, like, that's, it just, it's just helpful. It's like, okay, I can move on. I'm not, like, thinking, what did I do wrong? What did I, and it, you know. And it means so much. And, like, I, I like, I'm really interested in like your journey just generally as like starting as an actor and then going on to like writing and directing yeah, and yeah. producing and and kind of like having that more kind of like wide lens view of the industry mm. because it is like as a, I just think as an actor um it's it, it's really it can sometimes be really hard to navigate the industry as an individual or feeling a feeling very like you're on a very lonely pathway yeah, through yeah. this industry and you don't get that perspective you know and yeah you and we're kind of left to kind of think that if we didn't do it it's because we're bad or because we did it wrong yeah or you know we we look wrong or yeah, yeah, yeah. whatever yeah. and there could be like so and and the reality and i think you get this the more you, you kind of like work in different parts of the industry the reality yeah. is that there are so many kind of very very nuanced kind of differences that that uh that contribute to why someone's looking for one thing rather than another thing yeah right um and and it's all like the casting process is all problem solving isn't it yeah. it's like yeah. how do we like figure out like it's a jigsaw puzzle exactly how to, yeah. Yeah. to how to make this picture look a potentially good way, but it yeah. might work and it might not work. Yeah. But, like, it's really hard as an individual, mm. you know, mm. about like that, which which is why I, I always advise young actors to like surround themselves and talk to other actors and, yeah, yeah, yeah. and t- kind of like cultivate a kind of feeling of a community. Yeah. Because like, th- I mean, I was really lucky that like, once I kind of graduated, I kind of lived with other actors and like that can sometimes work and, and sometimes not work. Yeah, yeah. With people who were like positive minded yeah. and like interested in making things and, mm. You know, like, and they add your back as well. It's exactly. like supportive. It's yeah, like, yeah, yeah. There's a lot of, you know, you see a lot of like actors who are. I always say to them, just focus on what you're doing. Don't worry about them. Yeah, they they they're focusing on what they're doing. Yeah. So if you're like going, why did wh- you know why is he doing that role? Why did, why didn't I get an audition? He got an audition or whatever it is. You know what I mean? Don't worry about it. Yeah, just do what you're doing because. I think you know, and 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 I think like a thing that helps with that is like, again, like if you like allow yourself to move away from this idea of like, I am alone in this <laughs> like universe, which is I spend a lot of time thinking about that, <laughs> but um, 
you talk to our, you talk and work with our actors, you mm. realize, oh wow, there's like loads of people who are really good at this thing. Mm. You know, mm. Who I really expect and I really respect and really admire. Mm. And that's the same of writers. Like yeah, you yeah. start reading like people's plays, people's scripts, and you're like, wow, there's like lots of really good writers out there. Yeah. Same with directors. You start watching films, plays, whatever. You're like, mm. wow, there's loads. And if you think, wow, there are so many people who are so good, mm. and I'm also good then just by law of averages, it means that we're probably going to find a moment where yeah, yeah. someone that's good also thinks I'm good and someone else. So I even if it's not this one, it might be that one or yeah. that one or that one or yeah. that one. Having respect for like the multiplicity mm. of voices and talents out there yeah. can actually help you as yeah, an individual. Yeah. And that's why I think it is really important right now that we kind of like do the work to kind of like allow people from different experiences, different whatever's to like in and in different positions yep. to rise up because it just it like you from a really cynical perspective it, it helps you yeah you yeah, know, yeah 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 totally, if, totally. You're, if you're a director if you're right if you're a producer whatever it helps yeah. you if there are more yeah. more good people like doing the thing that because because like th there's there's a you know a, a, a misconception i think in this industry acting and also you know uh, be, it, behind the camera as well it's like you can only sort of get into the industry or you can only do that job that you want to do if you go through this mm channel mm -hmm. <clears throat> but you know like we, we champion my production company we champion that like you know new talent and you know new writers who've never done anything before we've got something working with someone who's never written anything before for tv and we've just got them um commissioned you know for, for development to the bbc and stuff like that and it's like w you know we want to see you see that talent and you want to sort of try and nurture it you know what i mean mm. because because you know it's like how else do you, they don't know know how else to sort of and you know we can't you can't obviously help everyone but uh, but i always try and you know well, well, I, think, yeah. I think particularly behind the camera or yeah. like in the writer's room or in the boardroom or whatever like i think that's that's where like there needs to be particular attention totally like, totally there's so like we know I mean, I know I was saying that I thought Will Smith was a figment of the, was inside the was television. Inside the television. I regret saying that now. <laughs> but, but, um, I, I know, I, I, I know what you meant though. Yeah. <laughs> right. Thought, yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> Never works again. <laughs> <laughs> um, but like, we know actors. Yeah. Like, and I suppose what I'm saying is now, especially with like, you know, the way Instagram works or like celebrity culture or whatever. Mm. Like we know actors and we see actors and we see what's happening there. So, yeah. you know, like I'm not saying we don't need to also work in, in terms of like widening the range of people that we see in front of the camera, but mm. like we, we can see that work happening. Yeah. Yeah. It's yeah. Literally on the screen. Yeah. But like there are so many jobs that like, even now today I'm still learning of yeah. like what like a Foley operator is yeah, yeah, or yeah, yeah, yeah. like what is happening in the group. Like if you really, really like ask me what happens in post-production. <laughs> ADR. In the editing process, <laughs> you're like, yeah, I can't even say the lines again then. Right? It's like, <laughs> yeah. why does it take so long? Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. Like so many jobs and so many people are expert at that jobs and who, and without whom, like the, the process of making the work is impossible. Yeah. You know, so I think, I think, that is that needs to be our kind of focus in terms totally. of like genuinely like democratizing this industry. Yeah, no, I agree. Totally, totally agree. What was your first gig outside of drama school then? Like, how? What was the journey then? Because you, you know, I imagine you come out of drama school and you're like, "I'm ready." Where's the <laughs> Where's the work? <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, I told you about the first TV job, so I told that I wasn't ready. But yeah, um, was that the first? Was that the first thing outside? Of that wasn't the first. Thi I'm trying to think about what really was the first thing. Like, um, I guess I did a play. I did a play at a theatre called the Richmond Orange Tree. Right. Um, shout out, and it was. Um, especially at the time this was yeah 10 years ago like richmond is a very particular type of part of london mm -hmm, and has mm -hmm. got a very de particular demographic of of audience who are very much to be respected but like particularly it was a particularly like an older audience there's more white audience more affluent mm -hmm. audience and mm -hmm. and the theater was famous for doing kind of like bernard shaw plays right. and like very like nice kind of like it's kind of like midsummer murders on stage okay, yeah, thing, yeah 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 know? yeah um, and I got asked to do this play that was written by like a, a Black Panther um, wow. called Amiri Baraka. Um, 
which was a play about like um it was set on like a New York subway and it had and it was like a race play about like a couple in which like um so, oh, well, no spoilers but like someone gets murdered right um along race lines let's say right 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 in the Richmond orange tree so <laughs> <laughs> it was it was um it was a clash of it was a clash of cultures but yeah, like yeah, yeah, yeah. um that was the first time that was I was and and I remember like getting the job and I was like wow like, I'm actually going to get paid to, like cuz still I was like you know acting it still kind of feels like you're just like you're in the playground really you of know course, you're just yeah. having a laugh you know I'm going to yeah. be paid to do it um and it was amazing. It was incredible. And I took it so seriously. And, you know, like, was like I was still in very much in drama school mode. So I was, like, warming up for, like, an hour and a half before <laughs> every single show. And, like, yeah. had a playlist for my character. Well, yeah. actually, I should still do that. But, like, had yeah. a long playlist for my character that I had to, like, spend the whole day. And I went over my lines every single day. I took it very seriously, etc. Mm. And then you kind of, like, come and you do it for the audience. And it's a very polite applause afterwards. And I'm like, what? This was, this was art you just saw, man. We yeah, just, like, yeah, yeah. reinvented the wheel, you know? <laughs> like, <laughs> do you not see how special yeah. this is? Yeah. That we're doing? Um... So yeah, I kind of, uh, for me, that was like a real kind of like lesson, I think, about like, um, the I suppose the conversation dynamic between the person that is, um, be it the audience or the viewer or mm. whatever, and the person that's making the work, you know? Like, yeah, yeah. It's very easy to make work where you're just like shouting at someone mm -hmm. and like expecting and like desperate for them to, to, um, to hear your point. Yeah. But, like, you just need to like turn on to the news to realize that doesn't really work, you know? So yeah, like yeah, yeah. My, my kind of journey, especially with theater work, but I think with television work as well, or film work is about like having like a, um, trying to create an alchemy that involves the person, that it involves the audience, involves mm. the viewer, and like tries to create something that allows the energy flow between the two to be symbiotic. Yeah, 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 yeah. Do you know what I mean? And that that all the all the actors or directors or whatever that I kind of admired the most are like masters mm -hmm. at doing that. Mm. Do you know what I mean? Like. I was I was on a I was I was on a panel for like one of these awards things. So mm. I watched a, pl a film that I wouldn't usually watch, but it's called The Great Escapers. Oh yeah. Um, and it's it had like Michael Caine and Glenda Jackson. It's actually oh Glenda yeah, Jackson's yeah, yeah. final performance. Mm. And like she's like able to like capture something that is so like fundamentally true, moving, mm. funny, irreverent, and like complete. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah with such ease yeah and it's not something that's in your face or it's not something that's like trying to make you forcing you to feel something or forcing you to yeah. laugh or whatever it's like effortless mm. you know and you see like when you work with actors like that you're like wow how, how are you doing it mm. and i think it's really that with that it, they're, they're able to like open themselves up to be a kind of vessel that includes other people it yeah. includes the actors they're working with it includes the director and the the, the writer's vision the yeah. producer's vision it includes the audience you know mm. and there's a kind of like yeah the, the, there's an alchemy I yeah. think that is yeah. connect, that 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 is um created mm. by that so that that like my first job like was <laughs> in many ways a kind of like a first kind of like confrontation of the fact that like acting is not about like me saying the lines as loudly yeah, yeah, and yeah. as impressively as possible and like being furious when people aren't like laughing at the bits that are 100% <laughs> funny. Like, like yeah. Funny. Did you have an agent then, then when you left drama yeah, school? I got my first agent <coughs> at the end of um, my drama school experience. And I say my first agent, she's still my agent today. Yeah. Um, but like I wasn't one of the ones like I wasn't one of the ones who got like picked. Like I, like I was in the same year as like who was in my year. Who's like like Taryn Edgerton was oh, in yeah. my year at Radar. Obviously, Michaela was in my year at Guildhall. Yeah. There was another kid that was in my year at Guildhall. Got like who? Li I mean, he, he literally got like thirty agent offers like immediately. Just like looking at his headshot. Yeah. Like seeing what you know. Like I wasn't one of those ones. I was one right. of the ones who was like w walking outside the play afterwards. Like. <laughs> <with her own>. <laughs> <laughs> No one's there. But With your headshot. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> exactly. It was still the times when you would like send your physical, like, actual physical yeah, yeah, headshot yeah. in the post to yeah, yeah. agents, be like, I can, I'm, I'm, I'm the next big thing. But yeah. Turned out I wasn't. 
but <laughs> it was okay. Um, and yeah, I, I kind of like, I, I signed very, very, very late on in the year, you know? And yeah. I kind of felt like it was a bit of a, someone like taking a punt right. on me type thing. But that's okay because it's paid like, off. that's all you need. Yeah, of you course. Know? You just need someone to, to like, identify something and just like give you a chance yeah and yeah, then yeah yeah i think this 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 journey is about like what do you do with that chance what do you do with that opportunity how do you use it to kind of cultivate more opportunity and like mm. you know like yeah like the carve a space for yourself in the industry where people like want a bit more of you yeah when you when you're when you're do you prefer stage or screen what's your I've got very, I've got a very short attention, sh attention span, span, mm. span, span. Um, so when I'm doing one, I really want to do the other. Basically, okay, I'm yeah. a kind of grass is always greener type person. But um, I suppose like the thing that I love <laughs> about theatre, uh, other other than the fact that people clap for you at the end, is the is the thing that I was just talking to you about, like the thing of like. Um, it being created in the moment, yeah, 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 the organic kind of like the kind of like teetering on the edge of a cliff, mm. most of it. Like if you yeah. if you fuck it up, yeah, everyone yeah, yeah. can see you, and like if it if it goes well, they it happens, mm. and you don't have the, you know, I suppose the comfort of okay, we, let's do it again, do it again, or yeah, let's change it, or you know, yeah. Um, but I, 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 the thing I love about the camera, I suppose, is just like the the scrutiny of it yeah. and like the detail that you can not that this this isn't true on, on stage but like the the specificity mm. that you can really dig in i mm. think like on camera like that kind of preparation work that kind of uh, research work that mm. kind of consciousness like really 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 like pays dividends yeah you know, like um and i enjoyed that yeah yeah what um what was it like playing Hamlet? <laughs> um, because I, I imagine you must have studied Shakespeare a lot in drama school. At drama school, yeah. And but I, I, Shakespeare's a funny one for me because like I hated Shakespeare. I, I'll be I honest, I'm not. I, uh, yeah, it's not. Uh, we we, we, we saw each other. Last time I saw you, yeah. And and I think that was like an eye opener for me, if I'm honest. Yeah, but that was a very that was that was very cool production. I thought. Yeah. We 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 for the listeners, we saw a product, we saw David Tennant. Yeah. Macbeth and Dumb Our Warehouse, and the whole thing is um. Oh my god, it was amazing. Is, you've got headphones the whole way yeah, through yeah. the play, so it's it's got a very kind of psychological feel to it, and it feels kind of like watching. And it's quite intimate, isn't it? Yeah, it feels like watching. Yeah, it on screen. Yeah, no, no one's shouting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No one's Whis the, the little whispers that David Tennant was doing and things yeah. like that. It's just there. It's yeah. like so. It makes yeah, it maybe better. that's maybe that's what it was then for me. It felt more like yeah, you know, it wasn't shouty on the stage type yeah. thing. Yeah, um, but like it, I suppose it was at drum school that I kind of first kind of got an idea of that yeah. being a way of doing it. You yeah, know? yeah, because yeah. Because like I remember like do, doing it at school in English and like hating it like yeah, yeah like not understanding it yeah feeling stupid and being mm. made to feel stupid yeah. which i think is a, is something that happens to a, a lot of young people particularly yeah, at yeah. school like if you don't get it if you don't understand it it's it's not because it's being spoken in language that's 600 years old yeah it's because you're stupid yeah right? <laughs> yeah um um but like the i actually uh, somehow ended up doing like quite a lot of shakespeare early on in my career and like worked with people that where I, like, I, I was in this like Sam Mendes production that mm. had like all these like incredible actors in mm. it and all of them were able to like make these Shakespearean characters just feel like people yeah. you know just feel like any person that yeah. you'd like see on the street or whatever and like they speak the language and it was like wow oh, this actually sounds like normal language yeah yeah and I, yeah like, and I was like did you make edits or anything no so like when I was doing Hamlet that was a big thing for me mm. I really wanted there's two things I really wanted, like an audit to cultivate an energy in the, or, or like collectively we wanted to cultivate an energy in the audience. And we said this f from rehearsals onwards, mm. where it was like, if you're if you're eight years old and you don't understand this, we're making it too complicated. 
and yeah, that means nice. and that is quite an odd thing to that's a, an odd approach to take to a play like hamlet yeah which yeah, is yeah, like, yeah you know in many ways the holy grail it's like mm. you know like all the big dogs have or lots of big dogs have played that part yeah, when, yeah. I, when i was doing it like andrew scott was about to do it benedict cumberbatch had just done it yeah michael yeah. sheen had just done it david tennant had done it a few years before that you yeah, know like, yeah yeah it, it, it's it's uh, Maxine Peake had just done yeah, it and yeah, was yeah. incredible. I only say that because I know she was. Yeah, yeah, I love, love Maxine. She was amazing. She's, she's a she's a genius. But like well, even watching her one, I yeah, was yeah, like, yeah, wow, yeah. like you're really, really just like talking it in your own voice, yeah, in your own rhythms, mm. and I can see the person. So like that's what I wanted to do. Yeah. Um. But yeah, for me it was hard because it, 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 I was 25 yeah. when I got cast and it was at the RSC. And there was a big hoo-ha about the fact that they obviously had never had a black person play mm. that role and mm. like the media really like latched onto that mm. as like a supposedly interesting talking point. I, I guess it's kind of interesting in a way, but like wasn't particularly interesting yeah, or, yeah, or, or, yeah. Or, or, or wasn't something that I wanted to consider in the way that I was playing it. You yeah, know? yeah, 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 of course, yeah. And like for me, it was like my, ber my first like major kind of, you know, thing where people were looking at me and like s every single interview I did or every single person that, you know, was talking to me in the rehearsal process was like, well, how does it feel to be black and playing this part? You know, okay. and I'm 25, do you know what I mean? Like it's yeah. different when like, when you're a bit older and you can kind of like navigate. I'm, I'm like so scared, it's Hamlet, I'm so scared. Yeah. And I'm like, so much of it is like, can I even do this? Yeah, there are so yeah, yeah, many yeah. lines and like there's so much expectation and also you're putting that on my plate to yeah, yeah, kind, yeah, of yeah, like yeah. kind of justify it yeah, i guess yeah, or actually yeah. justify an institution who i've got nothing to do with I've yeah, got nothing yeah. to do with like the historical choices that have been made by that so like especially in 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 the early parts that was that was that played on my mind mm. a lot and it was sad because like it really was a dream for me. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, like I'd never read Hamlet until I went to or seen Hamlet on. Oh, I'd seen The Lion King, but yeah, I'd, which I was one would say was a seminal pr version of it. But yeah, <laughs> but um, I, I until I went to drama school and like heard these speeches and learned about to be or not to be and mm -hmm. all of that. I was just, I thought it was amazing, you know. And then, you know, I remember getting cast. Like, it was like. Gen that was the first time in my career or really in my life where I was like, rah, like someone actually thinks I could be the guy. Yeah, know? yeah, 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 yeah. And like those moments are few and far between, between even if you're Leonardo DiCaprio. I yeah, think, yeah, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. Like to really, really, really kind of like take a step out of it and be like, wow, this is, mm. this is something real. So it was sad that that was how it was to begin with, but mm. then we got to work and the RSC is kind of amazing. The fact that you get to rehearse for a long time there, you Do get yeah. like a 12 week rehearsal process. Oh really, yeah. It's a long time yeah, to yeah, be yeah, thinking yeah. about like your father's death. Um, <laughs> 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 but it's like, what is it like three, hour, three hours? Or yeah, ours was, ours was about three hours. Yeah. yeah. Um, and yeah, for, for me it was, so I'd done, I played Romeo the year before mm. uh, in a production in, in Bristol. Yeah. And again, and like our production was like really punky and was like inspired by the, yeah, anyway. Um, and I'd like really badly messed up my voice. Mm. So I'd like, um, I'd, I didn't have nodules, but I had like, I basically had a thing where it was like, if I kind of, you know, like if you ever go, if you go into a pub, there's always like a low level kind of background noise. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like I could never speak above that level. Oh, really? Yeah, so I, I couldn't go to pubs. I couldn't like, if I had like alcohol, really, it would dry my voice out and I couldn't speak. Yeah. Blah, blah, blah. Anyway, so my voice was still like really, really recovering from that mm. like a year later when I was doing Hamlet. And and this was like Hamlet, three sh eight shows a week, three hours, sometimes twice in a day big speeches, mm. blah, blah, no microphones or anything like that. Oh, really? So like a lot of my, and a lot of my focus was on like physically how to, how to do it. Mm. Um, but yeah, I was so fortunate to have like, I, like my castmates in that show were incredible. And the director was super smart and like created like a great vision. And like, mm. we really like made, to be honest, we made a production that the RSC hadn't seen yeah. before, yeah. To be honest. and I don't think they really expected it to to be what it ended up being. And like we 
we we ended up like the year after like bringing it to London and we did it in Hackney at mm. the, uh, the Hackney Empire which was amazing and we took it to America and did it in Washington and took it around the country and everything and like everywhere we went like people would say like this I've never understood this play like this yeah yeah amazing mean? I've never been able to access like the themes or the underbelly of this play mm. like this and I think that came from like us having like a vision of like making it simple yeah 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 it makes sense it makes total sense and how, so how long did you do that for then you must have been so it was at the yeah it was at the RC for about six months and then right. we took a, a year a year away from it and came back and then did it for another six months and a kind of like tour and then in London and internationally and then over yeah yeah wow amazing and then so in between that were you working and were you doing other bits and pieces were you doing yeah, TV and stuff that's when I kind of started working a bit more consistently in in television yeah. and and working with like yeah amazing I, I did a, a, a series called Kiri that Jack Thorne wrote mm. and did like another series called Press that Mike Bartlett wrote and um, yeah and started working with people like you know you work for Sarah Lancashire and you're like what the f yeah 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 <laughs> yeah 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 yeah, like, yeah. or Lucy and Smarty like started working with like real dons in front yeah, of yeah, yeah. in front of camera and that's what I, you know like I think to be honest like to begin with like at drama school as you kind of do I kind of drank the Kool Aid a little bit and was and they really make you believe that like stage is like the ultimate aim and like the rest of it really? is like what, just what you do for money you know right 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 and I think it was when when I started like seeing people like live and direct doing it in front of yeah. camera that I was like nah not everyone can do that yeah, 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 yeah. There's something very, very, very special happening here, and something yeah. that requires an incredible amount of concentration and skill and mm. and um, vulnerability and yeah. yeah, and specificity. You know, so that's when that's when I started to really think like, right, <laughs> um, there's there's a lot to learn here. Yeah, and yeah. There's a lot to be learned from people. Um, yeah. What's the what's a role that you've wanted to play? Which you get to play, and what what what's been your favourite role so far, and then what is something that you really would love to explore? Um, it's so weird, like with roles that I've played before. Like I always, I always think it's the last thing that I've done. But mm. like with roles that my brain's quite weird in the fact that like I will like a, ca a character will disappear from me mm. on the last day of whatever I'm doing. Mm. So like. And it's particularly problematic with plays because, like, there are several times I've been doing plays, and in the final show, I've been like, I can't remember the line. My brain's already started like <laughs> deleting gone. it. Yeah, like, yeah, I don't yeah. need that anymore. <laughs> you know, and and similarly on on especially like shows that take like, a few months or to to shoot. Like, I did. Uh, I mean, I don't know. There's so many that I've loved doing. Mm. Like, I did. Like, I've always been a huge Black Mirror fan. You know, yeah, like, yeah, from, yeah, yeah. from the first series. It, is on series is series well, yeah we'll go with that seasons seasons, <laughs> seasons. <laughs> American. yeah 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 um on channel four so like yeah been having the opportunity i did i did yeah uh, did yeah, the yeah most recent series and yeah um, it was incredible worked with charlie on that and just was astonished. did you meet did you meet him obviously charlie, charlie yeah, yeah no charlie so our, our episode was written by charlie and bisha k ali yeah who like if you don't know you need to get to know because yeah. She wrote. Um, she wrote on. Let's get this wrong. She wrote one of the Marvel series series recently. Oh that yeah, was, like incredible, and and it's just like generally a top G. Mm. Um, wrote on Loki and, and lots of other. Oh things. yeah, yeah, yeah. But um, yeah, Charlie co-wrote it, so like he was there every day, and yeah, is a singular kind of like genius in terms of like having vision or or taking on vision and executing yeah and like that show is just like so well run you know we've yeah 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 Can we've imagine. all been on sets where we're like i'm really sure no one knows what, <laughs> what, what they're doing here right? we're not gonna get through yeah <laughs> but like it was so easy and yeah like, I, I suppose because it's black mirror like everyone's doing it for the love rather than for the money and like yeah, yeah. the best people and you know like everyone's sh um 
firing on all cylinders so that that was amazing but mm. then like working on i may destroy you was amazing because yeah, like yeah. you're working with um your friends and you're working in like an area of london that feels very familiar mm. and, and with characters that feel very familiar and is that know. was that kind of semi-improvised i may destroy yeah. you not well i mean bits obviously yeah. but like not really like i think like michaela is just like a very She's actually weirdly not that naturalistic a writer, but like she's yeah. a very real writer. Yeah, so yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. She's, I think her like superpower is writing things that are incredibly heightened, mm. but like and and often like offbeat and weird, but like very real. Yeah, like, yeah, 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 super, yeah. Super, like every single scene and everything that she's ever done, you've been mm. like, I completely recognize. Yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, believe uh, it. Yeah, I've had that thought before. Yeah, or I've seen that person before, mm. or whatever. Um, so yeah, so that gives it that kind of feel of improvisation, but yeah. like, yeah, that, that I, I suppose what was magic about that set was like that feeling of like joint ownership, like everyone yeah, yeah, felt yeah. like we grew, like, cause you know, we were like making that show when we were making it, like it was like a beat, it was a BBC HBO Clopro, but mm. like the BBC wanted to put it on at like 10 35. Oh really? You know? It was on after the, after oh, the Did news. it go out? It didn't go out at that time, did it? Yeah, it went out at 10 35. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It was like a wow. late night BBC One. Kind of, like, yeah. what is that slot? No, like, no, yeah. Nobody's... Who's watching... Oh, the, anyway, like, <laughs> 10 35, you know? So it was kind of like... Low, it was like low... What's the word that I'm looking for? Not low expectation, but like low scrutiny, maybe? Yeah, yeah, or, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, but it was just like, we are making a thing that feels fully ours. Yeah, you know? like, yeah, It yeah, felt yeah, like yeah. there was a huge amount of freedom. Okay, and, okay, got it. And... Um, and not a huge amount of meddling, you know. Mm. So there was something that, f like, both on set and but and with the crew actually, yeah, yeah, yeah. where like everyone felt like ownership of this like thing that we were creating that was fully ours, and like whether anyone watched it or not, we mm. just like knew that we knew what we were doing and we knew what we wanted to do yeah. with it. And that kind of like f feeds into the lighter scenes and the darker scenes, yeah, yeah. You know? um, and yeah, I think I think that's probably what people responded to. But it's, yeah, 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 it yeah. was it was on at ten thirty five. I didn't realize that. Yeah. That's amazing, isn't it? On like a Tuesday. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it wasn't like in any way a kind of like prime time. I think it was in, originally going to be on BBC Two, and they bumped it to up to BBC One, and we were like, "Yeah, we're on BBC One." But you don't. And then yeah. we're on at ten thirty. <laughs> what? We're on after the news. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Anyway, but obviously, look, like you know, good quality stuff always shines through i think mm. because of where the mouth is well and mm. and you know and it was just it was a, such an amazing show that yeah like it it was kind of crazy what happened after the fact obviously like it also it, it was it came out when it came out mm. so it came out in um lockdown yeah 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 you yeah. know so we were doing our adr uh okay the whole post process but we're doing like a adr like i was doing it in like my bedroom under your under a no duvet yeah. with like a, you know those tiktok mics that people yeah use yeah now, yeah yeah using one of those really that's the adr and wow. that's what everybody did um because that that was at like peak 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 yeah lockdown when you weren't allowed to leave your, your house um, oh my god so like it had it, it it was like diy in in many ways yeah you know so f for for it to go from something that feels like as and like with all respect but as low budget as that as mm. like doing your di your adr mm. in your bedroom under a blanket to like the response to it and yeah, yeah, the yeah. kind of like range of people that um that felt or were touched by it or felt mm. like seen by it, you know like it just goes to show that like if there are the right motivations in the creative process yeah the the limits are endless mm. in terms of like where where it, what it can grow to be yeah no I, I i totally get that yeah and then so you did the lazarus project with vanette and that's what two three yeah we've just done the second series of that just came out yeah like whenever it was like a month ago or, so, or whatever and yeah, that was that. That's been uh, an amazing experience in many ways, especially like to work. I, I don't know if you know Joe Burton. I don't know him. I've not met. Him. We we share the same agent. Oh, and, right, right. And I, I think you'd I like him. I want to work with him 100. percent I, I think you'd so. like him a lot, and you definitely make something amazing together. But yeah. he's like, I I've been a big fan of his for a long time. And yeah, like, me too. And watched Skiri Haji. Yeah. 
um, when it came out and loved it and just thought it was, could not believe that he wasn't like either Japanese or had spent like yeah. 20 years in like he was like oh I just kind of came up with the idea you know like he's that guy <laughs> yeah, you know yeah. he's, his imagination is amazing so like working with him and he's like one of those guys who like writes all the episodes yeah. you know like he's like a real from the mind of you know kind of David Lynchy type yeah I, I I I admire and also I suppose I d- yeah I I, c- I quite understand how people can do that like oh when I see right. writers like working with Jack Thorne at the minute and yeah. like you, you go I'm go when we can we get the draft and he's like next week or whatever you know <laughs> what I mean you're like what, what, he, what like Jack is actually an alien I'm sorry yeah. <laughs> And I'm sure he won't mind me saying he's that. He's got. A, he, like, he probably writes about five different projects at the same time. He does, and like it's yeah. not. It, I, I would kind of get it if they were all the same type of thing. Oh no, no, no. But like no. my man's writing like Harry Potter. Yeah. And this is England virtues. Yeah, yeah, and yeah, yeah. like a play at the Royal Court. Yeah, and like a King Kong musical. It's yeah. like shut up, man. <laughs> and he's got three kids. Yeah, yeah. It's like it's yeah. disrespectful to the rest of us. Yeah, you know? <laughs> like we were saying earlier on, like we're trying. How do you fit in? Like uh, going to the gym and going out <laughs> at the same, in the same day. Yeah, he's like written three plays. At yeah, like, by lunchtime, I hate it. I love him, but I hate yeah, him. And if, I imagine Joe's like that as well. Joe Barton. Yeah, but he's like he's like chill with it. Really? Yeah, 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 yeah. But he, yeah, he's he's brilliant. He's brilliant. I love him. So that, yeah, doing Lazarus project with him and yeah, and again that was another thing where like the cast were the thing that made it like special to us and like yeah, even Vinette, right? So I'd seen like Vinette in like a play ten years ago in the Suffolk Playhouse. She was yeah. doing like a Philip Ridley like two hander. I went, wow, that that woman is just like so powerful. Yeah. Just like she's got like, you know, that motor, like powerful. Mm. And then, yeah, you watch her work in the Lazarus Project and 10 years later and it's like, that's exactly the same thing. And yeah, I can't yeah, put, yeah, I can't, yeah. I can't put my, my finger on what it is that she's capable of like, just like turbocharging within herself. Yeah. And you see it in Boyd and Point, both in the movie and, and in the TV show. But like, she's, she's, she, she's singular. So like, mm. um, I, I feel really excited about the opportunities that she's getting now to like, yeah. show people what she's doing and, and um, yeah, I'm really excited to see what the future holds for her. Yeah, yeah, same. Hopefully, boy, one too. Any commissioners listening to this yeah. podcast? Um, what's coming up? We talked about the play. Obviously, yeah, we're going to New yeah. York. Uh, yeah, and so we're we're going to New York. Yeah, I'm taking Philip to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Weekend trip, but yeah, what's coming up? Like, it's it's always a bit hard, you know. Like, I've got this play. I've got a movie coming out, the one movie going to Sundance in Berlin in like next week and yeah. in a couple of uh, with Azuka actually. Like this oh. it's called the Outrun. Oh um, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Um Is it Disney that one Disney, is it? Or? No, it's it's it's, it's a uh, I think it's independent studio, studio as well. Oh right, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's yeah. independent. But like it's Sasha Ronan and Oh yeah, yeah, that, yeah, yeah. yeah. Of course, of course, of course, yeah. yeah. Um so that 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 that's coming out soon and then like it's that thing of like you're attached to these projects which say they're going at this time or at that time or whatever and you're like yes yeah, sweet i'm excited about it but yeah. like the film industry is crazy you yeah, know yeah. so it get like until i'm actually on that <laughs> set <laughs> and even I'm then sometimes say, exactly yeah. until i'm actually at the premiere no, yeah yeah yeah, yeah so like yeah there's a few things that yeah Hopefully, I'm really excited things, things that I'm really excited about. But um, yeah, the, the 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 most like pressing thing is is the play, which I'm, yeah, uh, I'm really excited to to have another life. It must be nice to go. I'm doing the same play, so I don't really need to. I mean, obviously, you need to rehearse, but like, did you not hear what I said about oh, the yeah, lines come the lines. out of yeah. my like? <laughs> It it's is like that now. It's actually a scam, you know, because like when you go back and do it again, they don't give you the same rehearsal process. Oh, really? They give you like one week. Oh, because so they're, they're like, like, oh, they they're know like, it. you've already done it. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. I'm yeah. like, I, it's as if I haven't done it. Yeah, yeah. Basically. Yeah. So um, uh, it's going to be a problem. Uh, <laughs> like, Should I come on the last I would, week? I'm, I'm, I, I'm almost willing to offer refunds to, <laughs> to anyone who's coming to the first three shows because it's going to be a, uh, it's going to be a flavor. 
but yeah. you know, like you should only do things if they scare you, exactly, right? Exactly, that's you know? what they say. Put yourself out, out yeah. of your comfort zone and yeah, you're gonna see you're gonna see some real tears on, <laughs> on, on those first shows. <laughs> oh well, man. Well we you know, every episode now we do this thing where we where we ask about a rogue T V sure, show sure, or sure. a film that you sort of I don't know, maybe keep going back to or you've watched a few times or something that you've seen recently or whatever. What Something that you sort of, you know, you, d you didn't expect you would. All right. I've, uh, I've been thinking about this and I've been like kind of like uh, swinging for a few different things. But I'm going to go with this one thing that I've, I've watched this one documentary like a few times and it's called uh, Jiro Dreams of Sushi. I've heard of it. Have you seen, seen it? it? No, no, no. Is it uh, animation? No, it's a documentary. Oh. So it's about like this guy. He's ninety eight years old now. Yeah. And he's like a master sushi maker. Yeah, you yeah. Know? So he, he he's he's like the oldest recipient of a f of three Michelin stars. Um and he's got this like tiny like sushi shop. Um sushi shop. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Sushi yeah. restaurant. Yeah. Um in <laughs> Sushi takeaway. <Yeah. laughs> in, um in Tokyo. And yeah. it's got ten ten people can 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 eat there per night. Wow. Ten people's tiny. And but like he the the I suppose the documentary is about like the lifetime of work that goes into training to be a master yeah. of your craft. Yeah. And I think that's very relevant to yeah, yeah, yeah. what we're talking about, what we do, mm -hmm. and something that I think is easily forgotten, you know? So like he talks about like just like the training, the vocational training that is required to understand what to do with fish and yeah. to understand what to do. It takes like 10 years alone just to do the yeah. rice. And then you've got to spend another like five years on egg and like, Time. and this is like fit you like the physical labor like yeah. for the octopus before they put that and you get like that tiny bit of octopus yeah. they massage each octopus for 50 minutes 50 minutes and like it, it's obviously not him doing it it's like yeah, it's yeah, like yeah, the yeah, new yeah. kids but like <laughs> uh, yeah anyway it's an, it's an, i think it's wow. an amazing kind of study of like um contin the continuation of vocational training mm. and i like I think particularly with acting, or I, I don't know, I don't know if you'd say the same with directing, right? It kind of, there, there, there sometimes feels like the feeling that like you, let's say you go to drama school or you get your first job, or you start working with an actor and you're like, that's the end of my training. Like, I, I, know, yeah. I know I had to do it now. Do you know what I mean? That's it. Yeah, I'm ready. And, you know, and like yeah. now I just like turn up and do it. But yeah. like, um, I, like I, I was chatting to my friend the other day and my friend's dad is um uh works in like metal mm. you know and like talks about like the physical the physical um toil i guess mm. of like working in that like, industry and like it feels vocational and he always talks about how like you he feels that you must apply that to acting as well you must treat it like a physical mm. job mm. and like that needs to be like physically worked on yeah. and developed and continuing so and i think if you're going to get to that thing that i was talking about with glenda jackson mm. i think that's what's required and it I, like well it's, it, it's like i i always say like athletes train every day of course so right. as, as actors or you know even directors as well you should be doing something that's stimulating your mind or yeah is is helping you to and the thing, you know and the thing is it like when i say like training like i i like i am kind of i'm partly talking about yeah like go to acting classes yeah. or you know read books or whatever but mm. i'm not even just saying that because like we like to be honest we all know like actors who are just like oh, like all you talk about is acting you know yeah, I mean? yeah all yeah, you yeah, talk yeah. about is like De Niro and it's yeah. like yeah they're great but shut up man yeah, but yeah. like there is <laughs> yeah. more to it you know yeah, like yeah. like everything is relevant mm -hmm. like the bus journey that you went on is relevant the argument that you had with your family is relevant the yeah. football match that you watched or played in is mm -hmm. relevant you know like all of it is learning and all of it can be like fed into your practice and to your craft yeah, yeah. but I think consciously we need to think that 
you yeah, know, because yeah, like yeah. if we, we, I think consciously we need to think about like what can we get better at or what are we mm. weaker at or how do we want to like expand our skill set yeah. because like, I kind of feel like if you want to have a career mm. in this as opposed to just doing the succession of jobs, yeah, you yeah, need yeah. to have like, you need to expand, you know, yeah, you yeah, need yeah. to, you, and, and that's bigger than just that same range being able to play like mm. this kind of part and that kind of part, but you need to like expand to be able to allow the work that you do to be more multi-dimensional and yeah. to have more depth and to have more kind of like um je ne sais quoi mm, mm, mm. french gcse I love uh, it. <laughs> but you know what i'm saying <laughs> yeah, 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 right yeah. and that's training that's continuing training so yeah that's what it made me think when i, w- I watched the i watched it with my nephew again last and what time. is it 90 so. 90 odd years old he's 98 now wow i need to watch that and it's peak because like just what like not a spoiler but one bit that i was just like that's long is that he's got like these two sons and one of the sons, it's kind of like Charles, basically. One of the right. sons is like in training to take over from him. Right. And he's been in train, and like he wanted to be like a, a rally driver or something like that. Right, and right. Like, no, he was like, when he was like 19, he was like, no, 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 just training you up, you can take over the business. This was 50 years ago, <laughs> 45 years ago now. <laughs> can you exactly. imagine? I'm a bit old to be a rally driver now. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I'll just carry on. And obviously he's amazing, but like he's, he's, he's ready to take the crown and like, yeah. anyway, it's like, it's, 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 it's fascinating documentary. So yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, I'll that's, definitely that's, I'll get on that. That's definitely. My, um, suggestion. It's been a pleasure, mate. Yeah, it's Good been really fun. All day, man. It's, uh, it's really yeah, fun. Really appreciate yeah. you coming on. Not at all, man. I'm like, I'm, 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 I'm happy that I asked you. Well, I'm happy I told you I was a fan of it now, even though earlier I was like, fuck, why did I say that? <laughs> <laughs> mate, honestly, it's been been amazing. Yeah, I've loved just, it. Thank like, you so I much, say, Chat all day. So thank you, mate. Appreciate Pleasure. It.